Hi, everybody. It's Alyssa from Awaken Authenticity, and I had a really good friend named Sarah ask me how to pick and choose her tarot deck, her first tarot deck. And so I thought it would be um, a helpful thing for other people who are also looking to figure out what their next or first tarot deck is going to be. So I've invited her here and I have some suggestions and we'll be having her ask some questions along the way. So let me just introduce you real quick. Hi, Sarah. Hello. <laughs> um, and Tell me what your background in tarot is and what you're looking for in a deck. Ah, so I, I've only had like a handful of readings ever. And I think three of them have been with you. <laughs> so um, I think partially I'm looking for something like, I feel like resonating with the art important to me you know that it be something that I'm that I find um beautiful and that I'm drawn to and um you know I just basically have no idea how to go about picking out my first deck and so I uh, was looking for some guidance on what might be a good beginner deck Perfect. Cool. Sounds good. So first couple things to talk about are just reminding those who don't know that there are tarot decks and there are oracle decks. And the oracle decks are, are sky's the limit. There's all kinds of different ways to uh, divine through cards. And a lot of decks are oracle decks, just meaning that there's no specific structure associated with that particular deck. Tarot decks, on the other hand, are a series of cards. There are 78 cards in total. There's four suits and in the minor arcana, and then there's all the major arcana uh, cards. So that's what we're talking about here. Um, I'm going to start out um, with looking at this deck. This is called the Hoi Poloi deck, and it is a very similar deck to the Rider Waite Smith deck. The coloring is slightly different, but it's almost identical to the Rider Waite Smith deck. So the Rider Waite Smith deck is the one that I think most people these days kind of use as their basis. And so it's important if you want to be reading within the Rider Waite Smith arena that your deck be based on RWS so that you are able to tell what your cards mean compared to what other cards mean in other decks. And uh, so that w whatever deck you get first harkens back to this uh, more classical deck, if you will. So that's sort of like one suggestion is like, if you take a look at the Rider Waite Smith deck and see if that particular deck resonates with you or not. I do think that resonating with the art on the deck is really, really important. And I'll give you an example of why. Um, so when I was in my teenage years, my mom knew that I was a little bit interested in tarot. And she got me this, uh, it's called the Starter Tarot Deck. <laughs> and the deck looks like this on the back. And then it has these like crayon drawings. And I just did not connect with the imagery at all. And the thing that is beautiful about this deck that I can tell as a tarot reader many, many years later is that it does have these sort of cheating things. So you can see what it means upright. You can see what it indicates upside down. And so that's why it's called the starter tarot deck. But as a starter tarot reader, I didn't understand that and I really hated the, the imagery. So I never used it. So I never learned it, uh, never learned tarot using that deck. On the flip side, um, the first deck that I started to actually read with was the World Spirit Tarot deck. And if you're in the dance world, this is the one that um, Ansa created. Mm -hmm. And I got this deck to support Ansa's work. It's really beautiful woodcut prints. And I was really lucky because I didn't know this at the time, but she bases her imagery very closely with the Rider Waite Smith 
background. And so everything that I learned from learning this deck, I was able to use and still use as I'm reading in other decks. So that's one thing that I would suggest is make sure that if you want to read within that um, framework, the RWS framework, that you get some a, a deck that is compatible with RWS. So I'm going to put a, a link in the bottom and Sarah, I will share it with you in a little bit. There's, there's a website and I'm forgetting the name of it right now, but you can basically search any deck and it'll tell you what it's based on as far as whether it's, it's associated with a Rider Waite Smith or another form. Other forms include, usually Thoth is the most common other form, but then there are other decks that are not Oracle decks but are another form of divination. So like Lenormand is, is one of those. So I have two other decks that kind of within my own collection stood out to me as really great decks that do connect to Rider Waite Smith. And they are the Lightseer's Tarot. This is by Chris Ann Donnelly. This deck is really beautiful. The imagery is very different from RWS, but the, the meanings and the connections and, and everything are the same. They're just a different way of looking at these images. So I, the reason that I'm like kind of flipping through some of the pictures is so that you can get a good sense of what the deck looks like and just kind of see if this is something that you might connect with. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Yeah, it's a gorgeous deck. And then the other one was the one that I read from um, in our reading the other night. And this is the uh, True Heart Intuitive Tarot. And this similarly is a different interpretation artistically, but the but the meanings and the imagery is, I mean, the, the imagery in here is very similar to RWS too. And so... It works very well, and I think that it would be a great deck to learn with. I, the, the World Spirit Tarot, the Light Seers Tarot, the True Heart Intuitive Tarot, those are three decks that I have that I think would make fantastic beginner decks because everything that they have in them is correlative with Rider Waite Smith and is easy to connect to other decks as as you learn. For me, I'm a very visual person. And so I have in my head, the the world spirit tarot in my head with when I'm reading other decks, I'm always referring back to this in my head, because that's how I think. If you're not so visual, it might not be as important. But it's a it's a good place to start, particularly if you are visual. I have a ton of decks and I wanted to kind of give you a little breakdown of other types of decks that are either really great decks or not great decks or great decks that would be terrible for beginners, and et cetera. So this next, before we go on, do you have any questions about that? Um, so do the ones, out of the ones that you recommended, do they each come with their own guidebook? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all three of them do come up with their own guidebook. When there is a book that is included inside the box, you call it a little white book, whether it's white or not. And, and that is another place that I learn a lot from is the, is the little white books. Um, however, the little white books are specific to that particular deck. And for me, I don't think that the little white books are sufficient to learn tarot with. What I would suggest, if you are wanting to do the deep study yourself, uh, I used this book to teach myself tarot. It's really thorough. And one thing that I love about it is that she chooses multiple versions of the same card for every single card so that you can compare and contrast and see the differences between the same card in different decks, which makes it a lot easier to read other decks in the future. Then if you are less of a visual person and more of an audio or um, doing person, I have a class that I offer called Tarot by the Card, and that's available on my website, and I'll also link to that and send you the link. 
that is a course in which we go through the cards one at a time and I kind of explain the thought process of why each card means what it means and that way you don't have to memorize it necessarily. There's definitely a lot of memorization that goes into tarot but it's easier if you have reasons for understanding why each card is what it is. Um, so then moving on to this is my pile of cards of, of decks that I think are fantastic decks. They might be a little tricky as a first deck, but they're fantastic decks. This is the Prisma Visions Tarot. And one of the things that I love about this deck is that the cards line up, if you put them side by side within a suit, they line up and fit together and tell it a story. So you get to learn the, the story of the deck, so to speak. Because they do that, and just because every artist has their own interpretation of tarot, the interpretation of the cards might be slightly different than what the straight up Rider Waite Smith might be. And that's why I would put this deck in the second category of like fantastic decks, maybe not the best for a beginner beginner. But first of all, this, the colors, it's a, it's a silver deck, and then it's just a freaking gorgeous, gorgeous deck. I just love it so much. It's like Van Gogh. That is very Van Gogh. That yeah. Last, that, that was, yeah. Yeah. It also has its own little, little white book. Another one that I really love that I do know a friend of mine got this as her first deck and I think that it is not a terrible first deck um, particularly if you really identify with the imagery. This is the Deviant Moon Tarot and the Deviant Moon Tarot I think is just gorgeous. It's definitely more on the sort of like surreal slash goth side of things, but I love it. Really, really think it's a beautiful deck. One of the reasons that I put it in the second category rather than the first is because there's a moon on every single card. It's the, the Deviant Moon Tarot. And, and sometimes that can be confusing when you're trying to remember which cards have a moon on it, because there are in the Rider Waite Smith, there are only a few of the cards that have a moon on it. And so um, it can be a little bit confusing as, as you're trying to learn that, but not the end of the world and certainly a gorgeous deck. Then I have um, in, this, in this category, another deck by Chris Ann Donnelly. This is the Muse Tarot. And this I think is certainly one of my favorite decks. It's another, it's a collage deck and the imagery is just impeccable just so meaningful full of full of energy i think and yeah this this deck is just freaking gorgeous but i do think that it takes a little bit more time to kind of sink into the meaning so like there in each of her cards she just understands the concepts so well that she's able to put like a ton of different uh, you know meaning that you wouldn't normally see in a deck and to understand that i think is really important as a reader particularly if you're reading for other people so for instance the three of voices is akin to the three of swords and that's usually shown as a heart with three swords in it and here she has just light as the sword and if you were reading for somebody else they'd be like okay but what's this going on here and i think it's important to be able as a tarot reader to understand why the imagery is what it is in a card and you might have to you know refer to the book more than normal with this deck but it is amazing it's an incredible deck the cat tarot deck is I, I i've seen this at like art stores like it's it's a fairly ubiquitous easy to find deck and it's really really cute and the person who designed it did a fantastic job of connecting the meaning of each card with something that's relevant to a cat's life 
but I do think that as a first deck, it would be quite difficult to like put the meanings together unless you're already familiar with the meanings. But it's mm -hmm. like, it's so fun. That fat and happy cat. <laughs> yeah. Not even sure what the names of these two are. They, they're definitely, I don't suggest finding or looking for or getting decks that aren't sold by the author. This is, this is a deck that is smaller than it's supposed to be. And it didn't come with a little white book, which means that it's a copy and like probably somebody in China sold it for really cheap and it ended up in my hands. But um, so I don't suggest finding decks for cheap online. There are plenty of them, but I avoid them because I want to support the artists. Because this is, you know, a, a, a knockoff deck, I don't even know what the name of it is, um, but it's a really beautiful deck. Um, but unfortunately, I can't even tell you what it is. But it's another example of one that the imagery is great and might be a little bit difficult for the beginner to interpret. Similar with this one, this one is definitely a Chinese deck. I did, I did buy this one because I um, searched and searched and couldn't find the original artist, but it, it's a really cool deck that's like stained glass in, mm -hmm. and fantasy. It's really beautiful. I think it's called, I think I searched for like magic world student or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's another one that is beautiful and maybe not the best for very, very beginner. So then I wanted to kind of talk, a, go a little bit in a different realm and talk about pip decks. So sometimes you hear about Marseille decks. This is the Soprafino Tarot, which is from the eight from the 70s it's a, it's a facsimile of a really old deck from italy and this is a very cool deck but um, any marseille deck or something similar is going to be difficult for the beginner to read because you have to base you you have there's no imagery to tell you what six of cups means you have to just know what six means what cups mean and then what six of cups mean so this is just something to look out for that if if you find fa fall in love with the imagery of a deck that you do go ahead and look at the pip uh, cards or the cards that are in the minor arcana and just make sure that you also reverberate with the uh, imagery of of the of the numbers of the cards and because um, probably these don't elicit a whole lot for you so a marseille deck is another type of reading akin to the way that rider waite smith and thoth are ways of reading um, the marseille is another type of tarot deck the Soul Cards, this is a deck out of somewhere in the Scandinavian region, and it is also a gorgeous, gorgeous deck, but also is a pip deck. So even, and she goes one step farther, and not just the pip cards, but also the major arcana cards are very stylistically simple and not necessarily the easiest to read. <laughs> So that's just kind of something to keep your eyes out for is make sure that even though the imagery is beautiful that you, it also elicits some sort of meaning for you. And then we have the science tarot deck and again this is a, a really really cool deck. I'm learning a ton learning to read it and I connect really intensely with this deck as someone who, you know, might have advanced degrees in biology and stuff like that. So I, I like the science aspect of it, but in a normal tarot deck, each card refers to a, the idea of some aspect of human experience. And this deck, rather than using those as metaphor, uses ideas and people and theory from the science world to express 
the aspect of human experience. And so it, as a reader, it's really, really cool that they have done that with everything. Um, and, and they connect really well with each card. So it's a fantastic, fantastic deck. However, in order to read from this and not just be spitballing and making stuff up when I'm reading with it, I am going through each card and making sure that I like deeply understand what each of the cards is representative of so that I don't miss the metaphor, if that makes sense. So for instance, for the magician, it uses the ribosome. And I know what a ribosome is, but like connecting it to the idea of the magician, I don't think that I could necessarily get there myself. I mean, I could make some things up maybe, but I'm not sure that I would get there on my own. And so like I, I, I read what the little white book said, but then I also went and um, delved back into my physiology uh, textbooks from vet school to remind myself of like exactly what the ribosome does. And the, you know, like, oh, the, the ribosome t reads DNA and um, RNA and then recreates more of it. And so from the outside, it looks like the ribosome and or the magician are creating something from nothing, even though uh, there's, there's actually a reason for why it's creating what it's creating. So it's, uh, it's a, it's, this deck is one that requires a lot of study to be able to read well. Fantastic deck though. I'm going deeper than what your first deck should be. <laughs> okay, Quite a lot. I know, this is cool. <laughs> but um, I think that I, I think that I would have appreciated this. I, would, I got really, really lucky that my first couple decks were easy decks to read from. And I also didn't know what I was getting into when I was looking for other decks later on. And so some of them I have been able to read sooner than others because they're easy or difficult. So that's why I'm sharing this. So The Good Tarot by Colette Baron reed This is a beautiful deck. Like the whole thing is just so magical. And I think that this is a really, really, really beautiful deck. It's easy to read from in that each card has its own positive spin mantra. So it is the good tarot in that she does not focus on the negative aspect of any card. She focuses on the positive for all of the cards, which I think is a really gentle way to kind of get started <laughs> sometimes. Um, but that's not necessarily what everybody's looking for. Um, but I will show you because this card, this deck you can use as an oracle deck and not just a tarot deck. And what I mean by that is that each card has not only the description of what the card means, but also a kind of a little mantra that you can pull to mind the same way that an oracle deck does. So it's kind of a fun if you were going to get a card deck as your first deck and you want it, you didn't mind using the Little Right book alongside of it, this is a really sweet deck. I'm not really sure that I'm clear on the difference between like Oracle decks and tarot decks. Is it just how you use them or what they're for? Good question. So the Oracle decks, let me grab another Oracle deck that I happen to have here. So this is an oracle deck called the Divine Feathers Messenger. <laughs> and this deck has imagery of feathers. And then, and, and then if you turn one over, you'll be like, what is this? It belongs to a nuthatch. And then it gives you a little piece of uh, wisdom to mm -hmm. take with you throughout the day. So this is one version of how a Oracle deck uh, can look, can be used. And um, I would say that, at least for myself, the way that I use Oracle decks is like draw one and use that wisdom for the day. I use tarot decks similarly, but I already know what all the meaning of the cards are in a tarot deck, and so I don't have to look them up. The Oracle decks either have the information on them already or um, you can look it up in their little white book, but they're not, because they're not a codified set of cards, each, each Oracle deck sits by itself, sits alone. And so I feel like Oracle decks have less expectation that the reader memorizes what each of the cards mean, if that makes sense. 
And so when I say that the good tarot can be used equally as a tarot deck and an oracle deck, I mean that each of the cards in the good tarot correspond to a normal tarot deck. So you can use it as a tarot deck the same way you would use any other tarot deck. But if you would like to use it as an oracle deck in, in the fashion of like each, you know, in the same way that that, that, that nut hatch feather was like, you know, here's the little piece of information that you can take home with you today. You can use the good tarot deck to draw a card and then look up its corresponding mantra for that day and use it in that manner. Most, I mean, tarot decks don't normally have a mantra associated with each card. That's the difference here. I wanted to share with you, this is called the transparent tarot deck. And this is one of my favorite decks also. The cards are literally transparent. Wow. Which means that each of the cards, like if you draw three cards, you can put them over top of each other and read all three of them together and understand that um, there are overlapping interconnections between each tarot card. So this is an advanced deck for several reasons. One is that the imagery has been condensed so much um, that you, you, you have to understand. So what's a good example? Um, the, the devil card in this deck looks just like a ring of chains. And that's rarely how the devil is depicted in other Rider Waite Smith decks. Although this is a Rider Waite Smith based deck. Um, so you have to kind of understand and, and study each of the cards to understand where they're coming from here. This is the devil card in this, in this deck. <laughs> um, so there's, no, there's like no horns or fire, which is what we might normally consider with the devil. But what's cool about that is that if you combine it, for instance, with uh, the Wheel of Fortune and you put them over top of each other, you can see that maybe your life, your wheel of fortune has been chained in some way and how can you break, break free of those chains? So it really highlights the connection between cards in this deck. If you really want to, if you, one, once you have studied the deck uh, and you are comfortable reading basic meanings of cards um, and you want something really fun and different, this is a fantastic deck to help you understand the interactions between cards. Okay. And then um, just to the Naked Heart Tarot, this is a really, uh, a little dog had his fun time cheering that off, but this is a really fun deck that is beautiful and animal based, definitely based on Rider Waite Smith, but animal based. So I love this deck. I wouldn't put it as a beginner beginner deck for the same reason that because it's like fairly spare in its imagery and then my final deck in that category is the mystic mondays and this is a beautiful deck also and i i love how saturated these colors are and i also love how simple it is but again the five of cups that might mean nothing to you <laughs> So it's there, there are some of the, some of the imagery is very, you know, you can kind of pick up enough from the picture that you can read it. And then some of the imagery is a little more akin to a pip deck and not so easy. Then I have just a couple decks that I love these decks. I have three decks that I would not suggest. <laughs> Except for novelty i think i think all three of them fit under like i love them as novelty one is the tarot of the cat people the imagery is incredible the connection between these cards and the rider white smith are like tenuous at best but the the people the person who made this like basically in, invented their their an entire science fiction world <laughs> and then based their tarot deck on that um, that world. So it's very wow. 70s. It's very cool imagery, but like it doesn't connect very clearly with a few exceptions um, to some of the cards. 
I mean, it does, but like, it could be better. And then similarly, I just recently was gifted this deck called Spirit Tarot Cards. And again, the novelty is great. I love the novelty factor. The, each card is associated with a mythical creature. <laughs> Whoa, Frankenstein. Um, and so I love, I love that they came up with 78 different mythical creatures. And some of them fit really well. And some of them are like, that is a stretch at best. But it might be a good deck for like, if I, it, rather than reading from the deck, I was looking for a specific card to represent, for instance, Lilith, then I might pull this card out of that deck and just have it on my altar or something like that. That's probably how I would use that. And then finally, I have this bird deck that is um, just really, really freaking cute. It's also a Chinese deck that I bought and I just thought that the, the birds were so cute, I couldn't handle it, and so I bought it. And I've used it a few times for readings, but it's a little bit wonky, and some of the cards are completely backwards of what they should be, like they'll swap cards here and there. So just be kind of on the outlook for cards that, um, you know, some, sometimes people will design decks without really understanding tarot, and they might mix, mix up which card goes with which meaning, or they might have imagery that doesn't fit with the meaning of the card really at all, and they're just kind of like trying to make it fit. So that's what I had to share with you. <laughs> so it seems like, like what I kind of gleaned from all of that is, I guess like there are two approaches that sort of occur to me, and one is just kind of getting the like just getting the good tarot deck and maybe you know just like easing my in way into it by using it as an oracle deck familiarize to familiarize myself with the cards and that kind of thing and then there's like the you know sort of like the way that appeals to a different part of my personality which is like the like you know research everything first and like to get the you know the the tarot wisdom book and and then one of the other you know beginner decks that you recommended and i yeah. don't know which way to go yeah no th those are really good insights i think that there are so many more excellent beginner tarot decks than the ones that i showed you those are just some ones that i have and one of the ways that you'll be able to kind of tell whether it's a good first deck or not is ask <laughs> Like there, there are, there's so many amazing resources on Instagram and Facebook and stuff where you can just like hashtag, you know, whatever the name of the deck is and just like scroll through all of the different imagery and just see if there's like, um, oftentimes people will do either unboxing videos of, of a deck or they'll do just like a review of a deck and you can get a lot from those kinds of things. So you can look, if, if you see imagery of, of, a, of a deck that you really and really like, look for more, make sure that you connect with most of the cards in the deck, not just a couple. And then once you find one that you're like, oh, I really like this, then do some deeper research into whether that deck uh, seems to be good for beginners. Um, I'm happy to, answer any questions that you may have. If you find one, be like, hey, I can't really find any information. Um, you know, like I said, there's a website that I can't remember right now that kind of has information about how well it connects to the Rider Waite Smith. And I'm happy to kind of interpret some of that for you if it doesn't really mean anything to you at the moment. But I would say that as far as whether to kind of go the dabble route or the dive in deep route, of course, it is a personal decision, whichever way you go. But I think that the way that I would answer that for myself, if I was unsure, is to ask myself, first of all, why are you interested in doing this now for yourself? Like, is it something that, is it something that you want to delve deep, deeper into? And if so, then 
dive deep into it. And if not, if it's just something that like you have, that you're interested in just having like a little bit more of a connection to, but it's just like for fun, then maybe that's enough. Like you don't have to delve deep. So yeah. I think, and you know, the third, the other aspect, which of course is always pertinent, is what kind of time and energy do I have to devote to this right now? Exactly. <laughs> finances. <laughs> like yeah, all, but... all of are, 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 you know, very practical considerations. So finances is a big one. There are lots of decks that are like $50 or more per deck, which is really steep, particularly for your first deck. With the caveat that, of course, like if you are just like in love with a deck and you're only going to have one, maybe it's worth it to spend $50 on one single deck ever, you know? Yeah. There are plenty of decks that out there that are cheaper. I think that the best cheap, cheap tarot deck that I have found was maybe like $15. I think you can find some really solid decks for like $15. Um, I would say most decks are like 30 bucks just for a price range. But yeah, however much time you have is a huge consideration. I would say, you know, everybody learns at a different pace, but I kind of understood and delved deep, delved deep, dive deep, dove deep um, for myself over the course of maybe two months. And I mean, like, that's what I was doing with most of my time was just like, I was studying this um, Rachel Pollock's Tarot Wisdom book uh, and um, I did it in a way that was fun like I, I, uh, I followed a particular it was a free course offered by a woman named Nicole PR and I think P-I-A-R and she offers it still for free on her website so and it's just a like a two-week self-reflection study and I think she does it with oracle decks but you can do it with a tarot deck and so that was one way that I started learning the tarot was to follow her inspiration each day with the tarot and take copious notes in and outside of this book and then at the end of that two weeks I had gone through maybe like two-thirds of the deck and then I just kind of studied methodically all the other cards that I hadn't gone through yet. That is to say that if you're interested, you can bang out a pretty good understanding of the deck in a pretty short amount of time as far as like taking like, you know, a month to two months <clears throat> and then feeling confident or at least familiar <laughs> with the deck. Um, does the Rachel Pollock book sort of delve into the cultural history of tarot? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a really fantastic book. There's a, there's a whole section on... Uh, just like the the history of the tarot before she even dives into the major arcana itself, and she also talks about she and and she talks about history throughout the book too. Yeah, it's a it's a well respected book. Um, she has another book that is well respected called the Seventy Eight Degrees of Wisdom, and it goes through each card in depth. I haven't played with that book as much. Um, but what I love about this book is that it compares and contrasts the different types of, of decks. It, it has the Marseille, it has the Raider, Rider Waite Smith, it has the Thoth, it has like some of her decks and some more es esoteric decks um, or eccentric decks. Um, esoteric has a different meaning in this case, but um, yeah, so it, it, it makes it much easier to read any deck from reading that particular book. Oh. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much Thank for joining. So much. Awesome. <laughs> this is great. It's been, uh, you have given me so much to think about this weekend in so many arenas. So now to, now to let it percolate a little bit. Yeah. Let me know how, what you end up choosing. Okay. Will do. <laughs> Take care.